Farber disease is a genetic disease. Um, it's caused when patients inherit two mutated copies of the ASAH1 gene, one from each parent. Um, and this leads to the deficiency of an enzyme that's very important uh, in the normal function of cells, cell membranes, and, and, and other fundamental um, pieces of the biologic processes uh, that, that uh, help our, our body work uh, normally. Uh, the enzyme is deficient, and that leads to a buildup of a material called ceramide. And ceramide uh, is part of the membranes of, of cells and organelles within the cells. And it also has very uh, pro-inflammatory and pro-apoptotic properties. That means that ceramide, when it builds up, causes inflammation. And that kind of inflammation is what leads to uh, the symptoms of Farber disease, uh, which uh, in general terms are very similar to arthritis, to juvenile idiopathic arthritis, um, to other forms of inflammatory joint, joint disease in childhood. So uh, patients can have real swelling of the joints and real pain in their joints and, uh, and warmth of the joints. They're difficult to move. Um, but also Farber disease has a couple of other um, elements or symptoms that are, that are different from uh, arthritis that usually appears in children. There's subcutaneous nodules. These are bumps under the skin that also form because of the collection of inflammatory cells or um, are caused by inflammation. And there's sometimes also a hoarse voice because the, the tissue in the, in the larynx or around the voice box uh, also gets inflamed. So those two additional symptoms, the nodules and the hoarse voice, are help, can help to differentiate from a, a patient who might just have the sort of typical juvenile idiopathic arthritis or arthritis of childhood. Now, there are some patients who, who have rapidly progressive disease and will die before the age of two or three uh, years of age. Uh, uh, and there are other patients who have more moderately or slowly progressive disease um, who are diagnosed generally later uh, after many, many years of, of having been misdiagnosed with a kind of juvenile arthritis, as, as I mentioned, or even with uh, seronegative rheumatoid arthritis, which is more of an adult form of arthritis. We've seen patients uh, recently who have been diagnosed in their 40s and 50s uh, after basically a lifetime of, of, a, of an arthritis diagnosis. Uh, so these two things are very typical of, of rare diseases, and particularly these types of so-called lysosomal storage diseases, of which Farber is one, where you have a very broad spectrum. You can have patients who, who, uh, who may die very early in early childhood, and then some who will, will live well into late adulthood. Um, and the, the, the other aspect is, of course, the, the, the difficulty in diagnosing something which is so rare. However, uh, genetic testing is available, and, and uh, with a high degree of suspicion, uh, hopefully these patients can be diagnosed a little bit earlier, and that's what we're trying to, to accomplish through, through these types of interviews as well.